All right, I'm going to do a video refuting the Calvinistic heresy of what's called double predestination. Now, not all Calvinists believe this, but this was historically taught by Calvinism, including John Calvin himself, the founder of this Gnostic heresy of Calvinism. So what, they, what it basically states is that not only does God choose people for salvation, but also God chooses people specifically for them to go to hell, you know. And it, it goes right in hand with their denial of free will and their, also their Gnostic heresy of limited atonement and all this other stuff. You can see all the Calvinist heresies uh, come from Gnosticism and all of it just stems from their denial of free will. So uh, this is going to show some scriptures that totally debunk and destroy this uh, Gnostic heresy of double predestination. Because again, Calvinism is just repackaged Gnosticism. So anyway, let's right into the scriptures. First of all, uh, it's worth noting that God does not prevent anyone from coming to him. The person falls and falls into sin and doesn't come to God, and he does so by his own choice and his own fault. Isaiah 59, verse 1 to 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Right there you have limited atonement totally destroyed. See, his hand is not shortened that it cannot save. But see, they separated by their own fault. You know? Plain and simple. God wants everyone to be saved, but the people who go to hell are doing so by their own fault because, you know, the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Titus ch uh, chapter 2 verse 11. Okay? Uh, basically, basically, essentially, they have this thing of irresistible grace, but in reality, there's nothing more resisted than the grace of God. The grace of God is the most resisted thing on earth. Anyway, continuing on, Isaiah 50, verse 1 to 2, Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away, whom I have put away, uh, or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions your, is your mother put away. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all, that it cannot redeem? Or have I have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke, dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh, because there is no water uh, that endieth for, for thirst. Now, I've got it reading on the computer. But again, we see, you know, he's not. It's not short and it's not limited. But they're doing it by their own fault. They're resisting and rejecting by their own fault. Also, the fact is that you know, God prefers that the wicked repent, and He takes no joy in their destruction. Uh, Ezekiel 18, verses 20 down to verse 23. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do, do, that, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions, uh, that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? Now again, uh, dispensationally, it's under the Old Testament, but we see there, you know, God's telling them, repent, you know, turn from your ways. You know, I don't, I don't have any, you know, pleasure or desire to see you, you know, fall into destruction. Uh, go, it flies right in the face of this Gnostic Calvinist heresy of double predestination. Ezekiel 18, verse 30 down to verse 32. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so no iniquity so, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God, Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. You know, again, pleading with them to repent and turn from their wickedness because he has no pleasure in their destruction. Ezekiel 33, verse 10 to 11. Therefore, therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how, uh, how should we then live? Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way, from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Again, he has no pleasure. He wants them to repent. He's calling all men to repent. You know, you got Second uh, Second Peter three verse nine. He, you know, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You can compare those two passages and see that both in Old and New Testaments, God does not, God does not, you know 
want in the parish. It goes right in the face of this Calvinistic Gnostic heresy. Also further confirmed by the fact that the penalty against the wicked is not executed to gratify God's personal feelings or, or any kind of sadistic pleasure. Uh, Isaiah chapter 63 verse 9 in all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them in his love, and in his pity he redeemed them, and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. Lamentations chapter 3, verse uh, 32 down to verse 33. But though ye cause grief, yet, he, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies, for he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. Simple as that. Second uh, Peter 3 verse 9 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men account slackness but is long suffering to usward not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance you know it's simple as that you know apparently i guess uh, the calvinism the the gnostic heresy of predestination taught by uh historic calvinist theologians i guess these verses kind of went over their head uh, also the fact is that god personally prefers to exercise mercy over judgment nehemiah chapter 9 Verse 30 down to verse 31. Yet many years didst thou forbear them, and testif testifieth, testifiest against them by thy spirit and thy prophets, yet would they not give ear? Therefore givest thou them into the land of the people of the lands. Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them, nor forsake them, for thou art a great and merciful God. You know, they... Had, you know, essentially God would have had every right to judge, judge them and pour out wrath on them, but he didn't, because why? He prefers mercy over judgment. Micah chapter 7, verse 18 to 19. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. Uh, he will turn again and will have compassion, and will have, he will have compassion upon us. He will, uh, subdue, he will subdue our iniquities, and thou wilt cast them, all their sins, into the depths of the sea. You know, again, he delights in uh, mercy. You know, again, compare that back to, to uh, 2 Peter 3, 9. You know, he's not willing that any should perish. Ezekiel 33, 11. You know, uh, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. James 2, 13 says, For he shall have judgment without mercy, that showed no mercy, showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Also, uh, First Chronicles twenty one fifteen, and God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay that. Stay now, thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Oran the Jezebite. Probably not saying some of those names right, but you know we see this thing of, you know, he wants to have mercy over judgment. He does not take pleasure in the death of the wicked. He's not willing that any should perish. You know, he. Uh, you know, his, his hand is not shortened, it cannot save, but, you know, but your iniquities. See, they were held accountable for their own actions. See, again, in Ezekiel 18, talks about, you know, turn ye, you know, from your transgressions. See, if you reject God's grace, you got no one to blame but yourself. You can't say, well, I need, you know, uh, God, you know, predestined me. No, you're accountable for your own actions. But you see, the Gnostic heresy of Calvinism allows you to actually blame God for sending you to hell and also even when you sin. You know, and there may be maybe some Calvinists who deny this, but if we're consistent with Calvinistic theology, that's what it comes down to. It's called logical conclusions. You know, uh, logical conclusion is if God preordains, preordains everything, everything that happens is God's will, including sin. That means that you can just blame God for when you sin, and th and basically God is unrighteous for throwing you in hell. That's Calvinism. Calvinism is an attack on the character of God, plain and simple. And again, you know, agnosticism was the same way and it is also an attack on the character of god because well it's just luciferianism really so anyway don't be deceived by calvinism may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with all the brethren goodbye Thank you.